Today I'm going to show you how you can properly georeference LiDAR data using an iPhone 14 Pro's LiDAR sensor and a 2 inch reflective target. Now when you look at a point cloud, you're most likely going to be viewing it in RGB format or red, green, blue format. This is the colorized version of the point cloud and in order to achieve this, you're going to be using a camera sensor to colorize each individual point. Now this is okay if you're going to be doing photogrammetry and utilizing the camera sensors to do 3D reconstruction. But if I'm going to be utilizing the LiDAR sensor, LiDAR cannot see color. LiDAR is a light pulse and all it can see is individual objects. So if I wanted to scan this tree, for example, I'm going to go ahead and just cover up the camera sensor. I'll go ahead and start recording data. And as you can see, the LiDAR sensor can detect where the tree is, but all the points are coming out as the same color. That's because the camera sensor is blocked and it's unable to assign colorized points. The minute I remove my finger, suddenly colorized points show up and we can see the actual colors of the tree within the LiDAR scan. And so these red points now exist because the camera to LiDAR system was unable to assign RGB values to all of the LiDAR points. So knowing that LiDAR sensors cannot see color, they are heavily dependent on camera sensors to assign the colored values to all of the LiDAR points. This becomes a little concerning when you're trying to geo-reference a LiDAR point cloud and being at the mercy of the calibration between the camera and the LiDAR sensor. Take for example this picture right here. Clearly there is a misalignment between the camera sensor and the points that were scanned from the LiDAR sensor. Because of this problem, it's going to be very, very difficult to do any kind of georeferencing or even feature extraction. One of the point cloud visualizations is intensity. The intensity of a point cloud is defined by how strong of a return the LiDAR sensor had on an object. So the returns that the LiDAR sensor will get on this metal pole, the returns that it'll get on this concrete, and the returns that it'll get on the grass will all differ in intensity and they will be very visible in the point cloud. So for example, look at this edge of sidewalk. We can clearly define where the sidewalk ends and where there is grass, and we can draw a feature line along the edge of the sidewalk, defining its position. This is only utilizing a LiDAR sensor. There's no camera sensors here at all, making us more comfortable with the accuracy of the point cloud because there's no camera to LiDAR calibration. So now we've solved the problem for feature extraction, but what about georeferencing? How will I be able to see the center of my target utilizing the intensity visualization of my point cloud? By utilizing a reflective target. Now I talk about this in drone surveying where we use targets like this one to define black and white RGB values in order to define the exact center of the target. But when it comes to intensity, the color doesn't really matter because it's all going to be the same color. So it's crucial to be using different material for black and white. Now I bought a bunch of these little targets off of Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys to check them out. And I wanna just explain to you why these targets are so useful for georeferencing in a LiDAR scan. So this target uses two different materials. For the black sections, it uses a matte finish. And for the white sections, it has this reflective finish. So when I use my LiDAR sensor, it's going to give me a much different intensity return on the white sections than the black sections, helping me define the center of the target. And that's how we're going to do georeferencing with this target. So we're going to be scanning this portion of sidewalk with our iPhone 14 Pro's LiDAR sensor. But first I'm gonna lay down these targets and get a GNSS position on all of them. All right, and we'll set the first target right here. Okay, let's set our second point. Right. Put this target right here. Okay. Okay, we'll put the next one right here. Okay. And now just one last target. Put it right here. Very good. All right, now that I've set up the targets, I'm going to observe their positions using this GNSS receiver. And measure. All right, now we have the positions for all four of our control points, and now it's time to start scanning using our iPhone 14 Pro's LiDAR sensor. All right, and there we go. We've got a 3D reconstruction of our project. Now this right here is not the point cloud. This is simply a digital surface model. So I'm gonna go ahead and export out a point cloud. I'll come down to point clouds. I want a high density point cloud. Now I'm going to select the PTS extension because that's what's gonna provide us with the intensity values. All right, now we're going to utilize a software called Cloud Compare to do georeferencing on our LiDAR point cloud. All right, let's go ahead and load up Cloud Compare. So in Cloud Compare, I've loaded up our scan data and I must say it actually turned out really, really nice. For those of you that aren't familiar with LiDAR scan data without RGB values, 
this is what an intensity point cloud looks like. Based off of the different objects that were scanned, you're going to see a different type of return for each individual point. Now, our biggest concern for georeferencing is being able to see those targets and define where the center of the target is. This requires you to manipulate the color scheme of the intensity point cloud in order to define the reflective properties of the target. So inside of the properties here to the left, you can see I have a color scheme. I like to use the blue, green, yellow, and red color scheme. That way I have a lot of colors to work with and a lot of contrasting colors that I can visually see. Some people are used to using grays. Other people prefer just a singular color. So it's all based on preference and experience with LiDAR point clouds. All right, so I've selected my color scheme and the first thing I want to do is find one of the targets inside of the point cloud. I see there's one in the back here, so let's zoom into it. Here it is right there in that little spot where there's a bunch of red points. I know it's a little difficult to see, so I'll just increase the size of the points a little bit. Oh, that's maybe too much. All right, that should do it. And now we're gonna work with the display ranges to get those points to be visible in comparison to other points. So I'll go ahead and eliminate less saturated points, points with weaker returns, so they'll turn gray. I'll also change the range here so that we can have more colors in our display. All right, suddenly now that I've done that, you can see the red points are much more defined and I can actually find the center of this target. Let's take a look at a different target. Coming over here, this target is also very visible. I can tell that the center is right there. Zooming out here, we have targets down here by the bottom of the site. The first one right here, I could find the center right there. And this target, the center is right there. Now that we've identified the center location for all of the targets, let's pull up the CSV file with our control points that we've observed with our GNSS receivers as we georeference the locations in the point cloud. Now I'll start by selecting the point cloud and selecting this georeference and aligning tool. It brings up this alignment palette and it's gonna ask me where the location of the first point is. So if I flip my point cloud around, I know that the first point is right here and I'm just going to come in, select the center of it. Now here on the second part where it says show reference entity, I'm gonna select my pencil and that'll allow me to input coordinates for this entity. I'll pull up my CSV file with my points and I can reference the location for the X coordinate, which is 1349407777. Northing or Y coordinate will be 388560.553. Elevation 604.551. All right, looks good. Now let's georeference the second point. Second point will be up here. We'll zoom in, there it is. And it's going to be right there. Okay, great. And now I can select this pencil again and input a set of coordinates. Actually, I could just copy these and elevation. Okay, let's georeference the third point. We'll zoom out, I believe. Yep, there it is, up in the corner and right there. We'll assign coordinates, come over to our Excel. We'll copy the Easting, northing, and elevation. Okay, last and final point. We'll zoom in here. There it is, right there. Assign coordinates, and we've got the easting, the northing, and the elevation. Okay, okay, everything looks good here. I'm gonna select a line, and there we go. We have our rotation matrix. And as you can see, our errors are very minimal. Everything is under a 10th, which means we've now geo-referenced our point cloud to our control points.